Hi, let's start with the discussion of uh, RFID technology and many of the frequencies and markets the, that it covers. RFID, radio frequency identification, uh, can cover uh, many frequency bands, low frequency, HF high frequency, or UHF, which stands for ultra high frequency. Uh, so you may see implementations in, with low frequency in the 125 to 148 kilohertz band. There's been applications there for uh, animal tracking, uh, employee badges uh, in some cases. Uh, high frequency at 13.56 megahertz. Uh, this is where you will also find NFC, which is a form of uh, RFID. Uh, ultra high frequency uh, at 433 megahertz. Uh, this is really uh, an area where we have powered active tags. So essentially you have a uh, two radios talking to each other and you can achieve distances uh, much further up to 100 meters in some cases and then uh, ultra high frequency again uh, this is uh, where rain RFID and we uh, uh, resides and uh, we're going to be talking about solutions here today and there are also other solutions in the uh, 2.45 to uh, 5 gigahertz range so where does SD play uh, in RFID we play in a couple of areas. Uh, in the high frequency area with NFC, we have uh, both readers and tags, and we have uh, other seminars you can attend that detail our solutions there. And today we're going to concentrate on RAIN RFID solutions in the ultra high frequency band. Let's take a look at uh, various wireless technologies that might be used uh, for node tracking or gathering information um, in the uh, IoT world. Uh, so on the far right of the chart, we have various radios, Bluetooth, uh, LE, Wi-Fi, and Zigbee, uh, you know, relatively uh, mid-range expense on base stations and receivers. Uh, but these are power devices, so there is not a passive receiver. So that puts itself often at a disadvantage for some markets where uh, RFID technologies like NFC and RAIN RFID would be deployed. Uh, NFC, although relatively low cost, uh, near field technology has a very short uh, read range uh, uh, in that case. RAIN RFID can read uh, one to often 10 meters or more. Uh, the cost of the base station is a little bit more, but the uh, passive tag is uh, a much lower cost and can be uh, deployed for many more tags in the field and often is a better choice for many markets uh, that we'll go into today. Let's take a look at RAIN RFID technology from a global perspective. Although the reader design would be basically the same uh, everywhere, uh, how, what functions it performs, like reading and writing from tags and the data that it may gather that's stored in those tags, it should be noted that this technology is not deployed uh, on the same frequency globally. Uh, but you can use the STRU3993 uh, in all these different frequency bands around the globe. Of course, there would be uh, different certifications with different agencies uh, per country that you designed your reader for. RAIN RFID readers can come in various uh, forms. Uh, they can be designed for different markets. Uh, you could see uh, they can be incorporated with a barcode reader, for instance, or attached to a mobile computer. Uh, they can be dedicated devices, or as in the lower right hand, it could be a module that could be integrated into a more complex system. Unlike the previous slide, uh, which was mostly battery powered, uh, portable uh, readers uh, for various markets, the RAIN RFID can be fixed readers with a one to many antennas which help increase coverage uh, for the areas where they're deployed. They might be designed with uh, power over Ethernet, which makes it uh, easier to install in that environment without the need to run electricity to the install point. Uh, they could be designed for uh, outdoor and rugged use as well. 
Rain RFID is gaining popularity in many different markets and uh, discovering new use cases every day. You can see it uh, in factory automation where you can uh, optimize uh, manufacturing or tracking of uh, components. The retail industries had a big explosion of Rain RFID deployment uh, inventory uh, of items automatically with fixed readers is a popular use. There's been recent deployments for automatic uh, checkout and tracking of items. Uh, authentication and tolls has been a popular use over the years. Uh, we've seen it in smart homes, transportation and tracking of items and containers, and in healthcare, which we'll go into a little bit more detail. RAIN RFID has been uh, deployed in the healthcare care industry in recent years. Uh, one of the most popular reasons is uh, cost, uh, the control of medical cost uh, and tracking of equipment, uh, reducing loss in the supply chain uh, due to tracking of items, uh, making sure uh, medicines aren't expired, uh, tracking of uh, patient uh, data, making sure it's tested uh, and evaluated uh, efficiently. Another industry that's seen uh, deployment of RAIN RFID is the uh, airlines. Uh, for years, the airlines have been looking for ways to reduce cost uh, that's uh, incurred uh, due to lost baggage. Uh, and then the uh, IATA, the International Air Transportation Association, came up with Resolution 753, which helped uh, force that along. They were required uh, to track luggage at distinct points when the passenger handed over to the airline, loading onto the aircraft, uh, delivering to the transfer area, and return to the passenger. And this is a case where the low cost of the RAIN RFID tags and the range that the readers could deploy uh, provided a perfect solution. Let's look a little bit more at a RAIN RFID system. As discussed previously, when comparing different technologies, the RAIN reader emits energy, which excites a tag or multiple tags in a field. These tags can be used for various different applications for monitoring moisture, light, or power, product uh, expiration dates, uh, or uh, loca location of a product. The range uh, which can be achieved can depend on the reader. It can be dependent on the tag, and we'll get into a little bit more detail of various factors uh, that determine range on an upcoming slide. The RFID system uh, encompasses uh, both readers and tags. We've talked a lot about readers. A little bit on tags. So when we use the word tag, we're actually talking about a tag IC uh, that is uh, designed with an antenna. The antenna uh, is on various different uh, form factors. Could be paper, could be the uh, clothing label, could be, as we discussed earlier in the trials for the aviation industry, in a rugged tag that could be mounted on uh, luggage. Uh, they, we've seen tags used uh, for experimentation of tracking of small items. Obviously, this would be a small range, uh, could be designed into uh, other form factors that could be used in a more rugged environment. So as I mentioned, uh, range is something I'm often uh, asked about uh, in a system and uh, want a direct answer, and the, the answer is, well, it depends. Um, the range that can be achieved has uh, many factors. One is uh, we've talked about the power output uh, of the uh, reader itself, the type of antenna that's used with the reader. Could be a far field, near field antenna, could be a linear polarized antenna with a more focused uh, area, which might uh, uh, have a factor in coverage. It could be a circular polarized antenna. So we've developed a tool uh, to help you uh, uh, figure out your RF coverage in your system, uh, where you can plug in the different factors of power uh, and polarization, uh, and we're happy to share this with you uh, to help uh, optimize your system. Now let's start to get into some of the exciting improvements uh, to the ST uh, RFID ecosystem solutions. 
Let's start with the basic building block, which is the ST25RU3993, which is a very flexible uh, IC or system on a chip that's uh, suited for various different markets. Uh, it provides multiple protocol support across the 840 to 960 megahertz UHF band. Uh, it has support for frequency hopping, low level transmission coding, low level decode, data framing, and CRC checking, and uh, we'll get into a little bit more detail inside. The ST25RU3993 integrated RFID reader is truly a system on a chip. Has many features including internal LDOs for supply, supply noise suppression. Uh, it has a partially integrated loop filter. Uh, can be designed with uh, different 20 megahertz external reference options for a TXO or a low cost crystal. Uh, the receiver can be single ended or differential as a spy interface, has uh, debug pins to monitor, uh, receive, and transmit communications, and has a wide range of supply voltage for various applications. Here's a pictorial view of the ST25RU3993 integrated architecture. Uh, highlighted some of the features on the previous slide. Uh, on this slide, I'd like to point out there's a selectable either a 0 dBm output uh, out of the IC or a 20 dBm output. Uh, there's integrated VCO and phase lock loop. Uh, the framing uh, uh, area for protocols and logic. Uh, an onboard uh, dual 24-byte uh, FIFO. Uh, direct access to the uh, I and Q signals in the mixer. Uh, and uh, at ST, we work with you. We open up these registers and we allow uh, complete access for uh, custom solutions that you might need to develop. As you can see, the 3993 is an impressively integrated uh, RFID reader solution. But uh, even with all that integration, it performs very well on uh, power consumption. You can see benchmarked against uh, two of our chief competitors uh, on a 3.3 volt uh, 22 millihundred amp battery for equal comparison, how much better uh, the IC performs uh, and is well suited for portable reader design. Along with the uh, IC, a big part of the ecosystem that uh, brings your solution to market involves the evaluation boards and the enablement. Part of the enablement uh, for the hardware starts with the software. Uh, and we provide a pure uh, middleware uh, software stack written uh, in ANSI C that's compliant, of course, with the main UHF standards, CPC UHF Gen 2v2, ISO 18006B. The code is now uh, common between uh, applications uh, on the host and in the embedded system. So this allows for easier debug and development uh, and uh, reproduction of results. Uh, this can be divine, uh, designed for multiple uh, systems, including uh, Windows. Could be Linux on a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B board, uh, or it could be uh, in, uh, as in the case of our development board, on an embedded uh, STM32 device. Along with the software enablement, uh, we discussed the uh, ST25RU39. 93 eval kit is available. Uh, on board this uh, kit has the STM 32L476 as discussed. Uh, there's options uh, to uh, have an external PA to have 29 dBm uh, power out or run off the internal uh, PA uh, for 18 dBm of power out. Uh, differential RX inputs are on the uh, board. Uh, there's multiple antenna connectors. And it is populated with both uh, 20 megahertz uh, TCXO and uh, Crystal. 
Now let's get into some of the exciting uh, performance improvements that are enabled by the uh, ecosystem uh, of the IC and the uh, software solutions provided by ST. We've made many improvements in our solution provided uh, to improve performance, least not of which is uh, adaptive anti-collision algorithm. Uh, of course, during a demo, if you knew uh, with a known population size, you could uh, select a queue in advance for highest throughput. But in a real world environment, you might encounter a situation with uh, too many collisions, uh, uh, reducing uh, throughput, or too many empty slots, which uh, is gives basically the same result. Uh, so with uh, previously we had a, a static uh, anti-collision algorithm. Now we have an advanced solution that's optimized for throughput. In addition to anti-collision improvements, uh, other improvements were made also. Uh, the UART speed was increased from 115 kbits to 3 megabits. Uh, the Firmware now has the ability to send avail available data asynchronously. Uh, this now this uh, has given us the ability to increase the history on tags, which allows you to have more inventory statistics, tag timestamps, and uh, slot analysis uh, counters. Uh, was employed with a different Tari, uh, uh, gone from a 25 uh, microsecond Tari to 6.25. And so what does this do for you? The end result is you want to be able to read tags faster and more reliably. So uh, with the movement from the 1.56 uh, software to 1.88 or above, uh, we uh, can exhibit uh, single tag reads uh, up to 760 tags per second. Uh, and we can read uh, 200 tags in a field uh, in as little as 585 milliseconds. So we're very excited to work with you, uh, enable your next reader design, and uh, share with you these exciting performance enhancements. Uh, so feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and uh, to close this uh, presentation today, we've prepared a short video that uh, highlights uh, for you in a little bit more detail uh, these performance improvements. And included in that, we'll, in the reference material, we'll provide a link for this uh, last little section. Thank you. Bye.